Greetings and salutations. It's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to do a little thing called coalesce some data into one column. Coalesce. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, it's come together to form one mass or whole. In context of what we're going to, how we're going to perform this action in Power Query, let me quickly show you example of our data set. I'm actually querying files within a folder. So we have all of these files. We want to do is when our data set here, we got the file path, we got the file name, um, but then we broke up the file path into its, I basically did a split and I split it by um, that backslash. So we can see subfolder one, two, three. What I want to do is I want to have a column over here that coalesces the, the asset manager name to give context to each of these files. How do we do that? So let's quickly see how I'll do that. Let's bring it into Power Query. Bring it in. So then Power Query opens. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new column. I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick. Let's call this, so we call it coalesce. What we're going to do is we're just going to use the underscore. The underscore will actually convert each row in here to a record. Let me quickly show you what that means. So if you look at the coalesce column now, if you look at that, if I click there, it actually has the record of that very first row. So it's giving you all the dates on your very first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row. You can see it's basically a record. What I want to do with this record, I want to convert this record to a list item. So what we do is we use a little function called record to list. And this returns a list of values containing the field values from the input record. So we're just going to convert that record, this, into a list. So how do we do that? So we just go with that little underscore is we're going to say record to list. Yeah. And we're going to put it in brackets. There we go. So now we've converted that to a list item. So now it's no longer a record, it's actually a list, but the same data in there. See, the one thing that we want to do there is we don't want to bring any of those nulls in. So you see all of those nulls, we want to ignore the nulls. How do we do that? We use a little function called list remove null. So this takes a list as an input and it removes all the nulls in your list. So let's quickly do that. We say, now that we have that as a list, we say list dot remove nulls and say okay so now each of these list items will have no longer any of the nulls so if you look at this one it but the last value there is asset manager and this one the last value there is power query example folder if you look at this one the last one is asset manager eight so this almost gives us the coalesce column that we want next thing we're going to do we are now going to use another function, which is list.last, which basically returns the last item in a list, which is actually what we want to do in this thing, because we want to return the, uh, the asset manager name that gives us context to each file. So how do we do that? We go to, we take this list, we say list.last, we put it in a bracket, and now you can see it basically brings back for each one of these files, let's make it a bit bigger. You can see these files, that, that file from that location is actually related to that asset manager because we're looking at the subfolder over there. So the very last value in there. So that's pretty cool. But you can immediately see that we have an issue there. This top one, because this folder doesn't really apply because it's looking at the file main path. I don't want to look at the file main path. I want to look at anything that's a subfolder one to five. So we need to do some editing there to specify what columns we want to look at. So the function we're going to use is record select fields. Returns a record which includes only the fields specifying the list fields from the input record. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into that part over there. We're going to say rec record. Yeah, and we're going to say we want to select fields. We're going to put them in curly brackets. We want to select fields, subfolder one, subfolder two. So that basically, what I wanted to show you there is, is just that we actually don't want to hard code any of that in there. What we're going to do is, I don't like the hard coding. We're going to go one step back. 
I'm going to go to change type over there. And then I'm going to insert a step in there. Let's say insert step after. Insert step after. And here we're going to use a column that we've used before, which is so it's the function called table.column names. That's what we want to look at. Okay, excellent. So what we do in this step, we say table.column names and we give it the input. Yeah. It's going to give us a list of all the column names as you can see from file path right through to to that one so we have basically have a list of all the columns what we're going to do next is we're going to remove the columns that we don't want to be included so i don't want file path file name and main file path main to be included so what i'm going to do in there i'm going to use the function called list remove items which basically removes items from a list okay so we're going to say list dot remove items. Yes, and I'm just going to put it in brackets there. Yeah, so we're going to look at that, but we're going to remove what columns are we going to remove? So let's put it in curly brackets. I'm going to remove file path because I don't want that to be part of the logic. I'm going to remove file name. And I'm going to remove file path main. So now we'll sit with a little short list of all the columns that we actually want to look at. And so I basically hard coded the things that I don't want to look at. So let's just give the step a name. I'm just going to right click there. Let's call them columns to keep. Okay. Now we're going to look at this next step. It's going to break because we inserted that step. You just need to make sure the columns to keep over there. You need to take that. You need to name it that step just before that. That's change type. So we're going to change type and that should work. If you press enter now, it should work. What we're going to do is, you see, we come back to the select field. Instead of this hard coding over here, I'm now just going to refer to that columns to keep keep list and there you go that is actually how we dynamically dynamically coalesce a column so now for all of these files in those folder locations I actually have the the asset manager responsible for each of those so yeah that's pretty cool let's quickly bring it back to power to Excel and there we go so now we have the dynamic manager name. So basically, it's only looking at those those four to provide us with context for that, so we know what the coalesce is. I hope that helped. This really helped me, and this is quite a cool thing to do to coalesce, to bring things together in one column. Excellent, guys. BA Sensei out. <laughs>